Ah, I think I'm recording. <laughs> well, I hope so anyway. Making a video. Yeah, outdoors again. Ah, uh, I better check the zoom capabilities. <laughs> yeah, I'll keep doing that kind of shit. Alright, let's see if I can actually zoom. Let's see on something over there. See how long it takes for the focus to get bad. Sorry, don't mean to do experiments in the middle of videos, but... Um... Maybe I do mean to. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. It seems like something to do. Anyway, while I'm making the video, and stuff I should stay on the subject. So still modern mystic stuff, I guess this will be the last one for a little while, but maybe it's worth something, worth continuing the conversation with other people. Um, you know, about how this, uh, you know, uh, My Misery Me used the line, reducted, <laughs> reducto de adsertium thing. And, uh, yeah, I'm a big fan of reducing things. So I don't really have a problem with that, um, you know, if that's really where it goes, comes down to. If, that, if it, there is some way you can get down to some sort of point of, uh, you know, getting to the kernel of everything. I, I like the idea of that. Um, so this idea of exploring how, how deep does sentience go and where does it stop. And so the, the modern mystic is basically arguing that, you know, this tree is involved in the universe universing. These leaves on the ground are the universe universing. They have a configuration. Uh, molecules are moving. Uh, neutrinos, all kinds of little bullshit is going on. And that configuration of the universe universing might as well be the same as this configuration of the universe universing. On a, on a universe universing level, there's no nothing to see here. No, no real distinctions. And I guess I would argue that this may be true, but there still is, we know, a distinction between a hunk of glass and a telescope. Um, we, we know there's a difference. When something's being lensed, when something's being focused, um, there's a difference. It's, it's a, that configuration does something different than just blobs of glass or a hunk of leaves. If I put a hunk of leaves here, and a hunk of leaves here, and a hunk of leaves here. That's not a telescope. I'm not going to see anything through that. I'm not going to be able to, nothing's, nothing interesting is going to happen. It's not, a, it's, not a, it's not functioning as anything, uh, as anything that we know of. <laughs> you know, it's not a tool as we know. It's not a, it's not creating a phenomenon. Uh, so I could argue that um, you know, maybe we can come up with some, a list of all these rather simple mechanical devices uh, that create uh, uh, environmental changes, uh, create phenomenon, let's call it. Uh, you know, you could go with, you know, radioactivity or phosphorus, uh, you know, a TV screen, the old kind. Um, uh, different mechanical devices that uh, do something because of the way they're configured, the way they're arranged. The arrangement creates a phenomenon. So if I arrange magnets a certain way, well look, if I arrange explosives a certain way around a nucleus of radioactive material, I can create a bomb, a nuclear bomb, uh, that has its own little phenomenology. It will create a pressure waves and the classic mushroom cloud that's created because of um, conditions. It's a specific kind of a phenomenon and we can identify it as being different. This is not a mushroom cloud. Um, so anyway, I, I guess what I'm saying is, is I don't have the answer to this question. I said that in the video. It might take a couple of thousand years to get the answer to this question of what exactly how exactly our brain creates this illusion of consciousness. But to argue that this illusion of consciousness, to, to diminish it, to turn it into sticks and leaves, I think is, I think that's a little bold <laughs> from where we are. I think that's, and to, and to do it in such a rude manner, I mean, he really has been just such a yob. <laughs> it's really almost hilarious. We're always at cross purposes, it seems. I mean, when he's got his 15-year-old juvenile delinquent hat on, you know, I'm being, you know, 
Mr. Uh, let's have a rational conversation and apparently vice versa in the past. So um, that's just tragic, I guess. But life is tragic. So why shouldn't my interaction with the mystic be tragic? But yeah, he's just being a complete asshole. I mean, I've been nothing but polite in, in this conversation and he's been nothing but rude um, and obnoxious. Um, and as you say, he's ignored the substance of the argument, which is, you know, what's the point? Uh, so anyway, getting back to it. Um, so his, his argument's something like pain, um, unpleasant sensations. So sensations that are obnoxious to our sensibilities are essentially nothing more than just ideas. So just like contemplating E equals MC squared, there's just another kind of contemplation, another kind of idea that uh, can create something like, um, you know, an intense pain in your anus or something. Uh, you know, when you're, let's say you, let's say you have a gallstone or something, you know, some sort of pain that people might be familiar with. Um, you know, some kind of horrific, bends you over. Um, unpleasant, repulsive, obnoxious uh, grouping of, even a grouping of sensations. It's not only painful, but it's nauseating and just irritating. Oh, hard. Um, but that's just an idea your brain has. Uh, and it just happens to be that that idea somehow is obnoxious. Now, I don't, he doesn't provide me an explanation of how one idea can be not obnoxious and another idea can be obnoxious, but whatever. Um, you know, and I guess I would argue that from my perspective, I'm just saying that I sense a huge difference between the idea of brown and the idea of my ass is on fire. Uh, you know, they're just different. Um, they're not the same thing. The brain is doing it somehow. They're different things it's doing. It's not the same thing. It's different things. Uh, so yeah, I can't, can't just go with that one. Let's do some more zooming, more zooming fun. Yeah, it probably goes too quickly is part of the problem. The zoom needs, needs to be more slow and cautious and all that kind of crap. I have to find some way to do that. Whoops, I'm over here. Um, uh, anyway, I'm gonna watch the sun on you guys too. Anyway, uh, yeah. So, uh, well, anyway, so so in his his last video, he basically said, I was, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm reducing suffering to some sort of element. <laughs> you know, we'll put it on the periodic table a little suffering element, uh, and I don't think that's what I'm arguing. I think what I'm arguing is that uh, this particular configuration, the, the configuration of structure, chemistry, physics, that enables something to have this sense, you know, to be sensing. I mean, all our senses are, we call them different senses, but they all flow into the conscious sense. Even the sixth sense of our our intellectual noise, you know, our, our, these sentences, these ideas, the idea of a concept, we sense the ideas. Like we sense, like we see, we see our ideas, we sense them. So in sense, we have one sense, we sense. And this sensing is uh, the phenomenon of consciousness, uh, being awake. Uh, so there's so many ways to illustrate this is, I think, being significant. Um, and just acknowledging the fact that there's obviously something significant in this. It's not just a computer program. Uh, it's not just a, a red flag pops up and goes, I'm a red flag. Somehow the mechanism is able to do this you know, grab you by the balls thing. Uh, you know, and it's pretty hard to write a, a program that's going to do that in some other um, mechanism. 
where you could actually get that I've got you by the balls kind of thing. Uh, you're never going to be able to own something that way. Uh, so, I mean, that's like, the game we're playing is this idea that, um, you know, we're, we're sensing, we're, we are awake. We can tell the difference between awake and asleep. Even though the brain's still very active, there's a huge difference. We know this consciousness thing is an on-off thing. It has an on-off. It has a, that functionality's built. Well, maybe I'll do that on the way home. Yeah, it's probably better to light now, though. Yeah, but it's gonna be a lot of crap. Probably won't be interesting enough. I was gonna go look at the frogs. You can hear the frogs. The frogs over there. But I'll, I'll make those videos separate. Can't do them while I'm making a video. Because then it's just two different videos. Anyway, you can put it in the background. Maybe next time or something. Well, whatever. Sorry, unnecessary explaining of the procedure of video making while I'm making the video. Um, switch hands, maybe. Oh, that's so much better for some reason. No, not really. Anyway, um, so what was I? Remember? Doesn't really matter. We know the general subject. So there's lots of ways to illustrate, demonstrate. Let's say the significance that this is something more than just the universe universing. It's certainly different than any other parts of the universe universing. It is different. And it would be stupid not to acknowledge the difference, uh, and uh, at least at minimum, let's acknowledge that it's different. Uh, let's acknowledge that from our perspective, this certainly has a wow. I mean, it's a, you know, that bad stuff is bad. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't wish it on a rock. I wouldn't make that rock sentient. And I wouldn't make it suffer. I wouldn't make it feel compressed and crushed by gravity. And I wouldn't want it sensing a bunch of negative, harsh senses. <laughs> I wouldn't give it in mendium. I wouldn't put in mendium in it so it could um, worry and stress and do all this stuff it doesn't seem I can't figure out why I would do that not just because it wouldn't have a point but even if it had a point I would recognize that wait a minute that's not a good thing this is not a good thing <laughs> you know this sensing thing this is really dangerous this is powerfully dangerous and uh, so that's part of this argument so it's not so much I mean even if I said Consciousness is an illusion. Consciousness is a hologram. Consciousness is a manifestation taking place inside a closed system of bubbly wubbly. <laughs> Who cares? I mean, again, I'm on the inside. I've got the dope. I've got the truth. I'm, I'm doing the conscious. I'm on the inside. I've got the dope. I've got the truth. I'm, I'm doing the con. Okay, <laughs> that's where it left off. Um, yeah, I'm doing the consciousness thing, so I know uh, what it is. I, I can I can say something about it. I can I can report to the universe that yeah, this is not a good idea. <laughs> Don't fuck with this shit. Um, you know. So, I, so again, I don't think this is an unimportant subject. I mean, let's deal with trying to understand exactly how the phenomenon of consciousness manifests itself. But I think to argue that none of these mechanisms are mechanisms, like none of them are different kinds of features, is just, I just don't get it. So anyway, I was thinking that, again, this is, uh, you know, I like just simplifying this thing. What the hell is that, Andrew? Mm -hmm. That's stuff that fell in my hair. Um, anyway, um, um, so let's start with, so, so, so yeah, we know what, for, for what we are, okay, it's this replication thing happens. Then the next step is selection. Once you have replication, then you have selection about what the copies are going to look like. And then selection ends up creating tools, okay, so, yeah, you're selecting for tools. Um, and then one of the tools ends up being central nervous, C-N-S. 
CNS, the central nervous system, ends up being a tool. And then that has components, uh, intelligence, you could argue. Um, what else does it have? I mean, it definitely does the reflexive behavior thing. Um, what, what else? What else? What else? Um, you know, so, so then, okay, so part of that ends up being this consciousness thing happens, right? And then the consciousness thing, you could break it down into being, all right, a synonym would be feeling, sensing, um, value, learning, key one, right? Learning is one of these tools, right? So the thing that distinguishes us from microbes or other mechanical life forms is the fact that we can learn. We can acquire experience through living and through feeling, through being whipped, um, you know, or given carrots, rewarded or punished, we can acquire a, an understanding of better outcomes. We can we know it as a better outcome because of the fact that we got punished or we got rewarded. And that concept of reward and punishment, you could sort of see this, the correlate in the universe would be, you know, the idea of gravity or, you know, explosive forces or releasing energy, you know, letting it go about its business or trapping it. Um, but anyway, I, you know, some get too complicated. Um, but we know these phenomenons exist, like magnetism and these other kinds of things. And it seems like this mechanism of awareness could be one of those mechanisms, could be something like that, that is in the structure of the universe and that we amplify it. We amplify a kind of noise that the universe makes. Um, but, you know, I don't need it to be that way. I don't need there to be a thing being creating this this mechanism. All we have to do is say it's created. We know that consciousness exists, and we know it's not what a computer's doing. If I make a computer say, help me, help me, it won't mean help me, help me. It won't feel it. So we know that we have to make a certain kind of computer for it to feel it. We have to make a certain kind of hardware. And he's just mocking that idea that there's a big difference between a computer saying help me help me because I typed in the words and told it to say it and it's saying it because it's actually in distress and it's actually feeling something or it's actually worried about something and sensing 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 really sensing you know not just sensing in this reflexive simple reflex it's in a complex reflex and so I've, you know, I've thrown out different ex ways that you could explain this. I mean, we do see this duplicate thing, you know, two eyes, two nostrils, two nuts, two kidneys. Uh, <laughs> there are redundancies. And that our brain might be one of these things that, you know, the original brain in a trilobite folded. You know, it had two brains or something. It was born with two, and they folded on top of each other. And now these two brains ended up communicating, and one of them became the feeling brain, and one of them became the thinking brain. And, um... You know, there's all kinds of ways you could describe, um, you know, uh, what might have happened. But that's all we can do now is do the might have happened. What well, it's you know, it's hard to do exactly what is happening. Um, but again, I just don't know how I experiencing it would. How would the experience be any different if it was just software and if it wasn't if it is hardware? Um, I don't think it would make a difference to the experience. I mean, theoretically, if, if the two things could possibly create it, and we're saying it created it, that would mean this thing that I'm experiencing. Origin wouldn't matter much. Origin wouldn't give it credibility. What gives it credibility is the fact that I can, as somebody thinking, experiencing it, I know what it's like not to have it. And I, I know that <laughs> I'd rather be left alone than to do this. This is really bothersome and, and tricky. And, yeah, I'd rather not have been. I'd rather not have played with this fire. Um, and it is fire. It is a there's something happening here. To negate it as just, um, you know, wheel spinning or some other... Yes, it's movement. Yes, it's happening thing, but it doesn't mean anything. It's not different than any of the other movements. It's not different than any of the other tools. So if I had scales that fell off, or, you know, my hair grows, and I don't pay any attention, it's not conscious. 
So my feeling brain is no different in function, in significance, significance, than hair growing. Just tools, just biological process, survival tools, nothing else. No other meaning. I just, no. I, I, this, it's not intuitive, it's not... It's again. I'm all I'm saying is, is if you're going to tell me that's the truth, I'm just saying I can't find the handle to grab that truth. I just don't see any handle that says to me, yeah, it's just so obvious how this is just all fake and a veneer and it's all a facade and it's all just bullshit. It's experiencing it. I know it's not bullshit. I know it's it's like you know if I could if I could rearrange it, I'd rearrange it because this is you know. When it's bad, it's really fucking bad. And you want it off. And you don't want it off in theory. You want it off hard. You know, it's not just some theoretical off. Um, some word off. I mean, you want the real off. Uh, all right, well, I, you know, there's no point in picking it to death. But anyway, um, so the bottom line is, is yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit complex. It's an interesting philosophical subject. And I don't see any reason for him to be a rude asshole about it. And in my opinion, that's always been. It's just been a rude, obnoxious, pretentious, um, elitist. Um, what's another word for some asshole who thinks he knows better or he knows the secret or something? <laughs> yeah, sorry. I don't think what you're saying is all that damn brilliant. I mean, I, I'm not. I'm just saying. I don't think you're making all that. Oh, yeah, that's just an unescapable argument. We don't really feel anything. Feelings aren't any different than thoughts, and thoughts aren't any different than being asleep, and being asleep is no different than being... Well, I just don't... Sorry. The universe might be universing, but it universes in very different ways, and some of these ways deserve a little notice, maybe. Deserve a little credit for being really fucking different and really fucked up. But you don't think so? Fine. You don't have to think consciousness is anything. I think it is something. I mean, it's something pretty fucked up. And, um... Yeah, that's enough. I mean, I don't want to argue it to death. I mean, I, I just don't... You know, I don't... We're back to this nihilist argument again. I don't, I don't see any energy for even having a conversation with anybody if you're going to negate the meaning of all experience, and negate the fact that there's a huge difference between this experience, you know, pleasant, and this experience, unpleasant. Huge difference. One is definitely preferable. There's absolutely no reason to have the negative one. No good reason to even risk it, because it has this risk potential. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if you think it's all nothing, then yeah, how could you have any passion for anything? <laughs> Except to say that you're just living a deluded existence, fine, okay. And you're going to be motivated by it even though you say it's nothing. Okay, you can do that. You can choose to think that way. Um, but I see no reason not to side where with the where well the evidence points in my opinion maybe it's not good evidence but it all points in one place and the one place is is that damn this sucks suffering sucks I mean it just says it pretty loudly and it just doesn't seem to me this negation argument seems pretty thin to take away the suck potential I mean I hope you're right I mean it'd be really swell if it didn't matter that all those Jews <laughs> suffered in the Holocaust and all those you know trail of tears shit and all the other miseries that the human the black plague and typhus and spotted fever and all this shit it'd be really great if all this suffering has been all the surgeries without anesthesia I mean all the shit that's going on all that horrible suffering wasn't anything it would be really great but I ain't close to believing that's true <laughs> I just am not even close to thinking that's possible I, I, you know, it'd be great if that's how, if, 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 if I could go somewhere to the end of the universe and find out it all didn't matter, oh, that would be such a relief, but I can't see it, I mean, I really, so I'm, I'm just trying to point out that I really want to believe that, but I can't see how it's possible, just, 
you know, I'd like to believe it, but I can't. It just doesn't seem like it's a reasonable thing to believe. It doesn't seem reasonable to me. But boy, yeah, that would be really great. <laughs>